The first Starship test flight was a spectacular failure, but SpaceX is not giving up. They are working hard to fix the problems that led to the explosion and improve the performance of their reusable rocket. One of the major changes they are making is how they, s they separate the Starship into two stages, the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship Upper Stage. This will increase the payload capacity of the Starship and make it more versatile for missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. If you want to know more about this exciting development and see what's happening with the next Starship test flight, then stick around for today's episode of Great SpaceX. In rocketry, there are generally two distinct types of launch vehicle separation strategies. All require some kind of actuating latch or frangible bolts to attach and detach stages. The differences arise during stage separation. Some rockets, particularly Russian vehicles, rely on hot staging, in which a separating stage will ignite its engines slightly before or at the same time as it's released, blasting the stage below it. More commonly, rocket upper stages are jettisoned a significant difference from lower stages before igniting and heading towards orbit with either small solid rocket motors, small vernier thrusters, or, in SpaceX's case, spring-like mechanisms that can be tested on the ground and reused. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket uses a pusher mechanism that separates the first and second stages to allow them to reach a safe distance before the second stage's lone Merlin 1D engine fires up for the remaining journey. As the rocket briefly loses power, it loses out on maximum payload capacity, but becomes safer overall as the first stage is protected from the thrust and force of the second stage. Sidestepping decades of Predacent in 2021, Musk announced that Starship will have no separation mechanism at all. Musk didn't bother with a fancy separation mechanism for Super Heavy. He figured he could just use what he already had on the rocket and call it a day. Why waste time and money on something that only happens once per launch? So how do you toss a Starship into orbit? Just give it a spin. That's what Super Heavy does with its swiveling Raptor engines, nudging the rocket sideways right before they part ways. It's like how SpaceX flings Starlink satellites from Falcon by making the upper stage do a somersault and letting them drift off with a gentle push. Starship is so heavy that it makes Super Heavy look like a feather. At stage separation, Starship just says bye-bye to the booster and flies away. Then it uses some gas thrusters to calm down its propellant and fires up six Raptors to zoom to orbit. In return for the slightly unorthodox deployment profile, if this new approach works, SpaceX can entirely preclude the development of a pusher-slash-spring system capable of pushing a 1,300-ton Starship away from Super Heavy. That approach is possible on Starship in large part because the ship's six Raptor engines are completely tucked away inside a skirt, meaning that there is zero chance of nozzles being damaged by impacting the booster inner stage. Too bad that didn't work out for the Starship's first orbital flight. The vehicle cleared max Q, the point at which the most aerodynamic pressure is exerted on the vehicle, and flew for nearly three minutes despite eight of its 33 rocket engines failing. The rocket reached an altitude of almost 40 kilometers, the point of stage separation, at which time the upper stage failed to separate from the booster, leading to uncontrolled tumbling and a spectacular mid-air explosion. Musk spilled the beans on Twitter, his own social media empire, during a chat with Bloomberg's Ashley Vance. He revealed that SpaceX's Starship will now do a hot staging stunt, firing up its engines while still hugging the Super Heavy booster. We made sort of a late-breaking change that's really quite significant to the way that stage separation works, Musk said, describing the switch to hot staging. There's a meaningful payload-to-orbit advantage with hot staging that is conservatively about a 10% increase. So we, we, we made a uh, sort of late-breaking change of, that's really quite significant to the way that stage separation works. There's a, there's, there's a meaningful payload-to-orbit to advantage with hot staging um, that, you know, is conservatively about a 10% improvement. Well, depends on, on what it's being compared to, but let's say in this case, roughly 10% improvement. This approach, commonly used in Russian launch vehicles, including the N1 lunar rocket, allows for a more efficient separation between the stages. 
the engines of one stage are ignited while still attached to its lower stage. Musk said that for Starship, most of the 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy Booster would be turned off, but a few still firing when the engines on the Starship upper stage are ignited. Doing so, he said, avoids the loss of thrust during traditional stage separation where the lower stage shuts down first. Doing so requires some modifications to the Super Heavy Booster. Musk said SpaceX is working on an extension to the top of the booster that is almost all vents to allow the exhaust from the upper stage to escape while still attached to the booster. SpaceX will also add shielding to the top of the booster to protect it from the exhaust. This is the most risky thing, I think, for the next flight, he said, of the new stage separation technique. The vehicle underwent a major makeover with more than a thousand tweaks. Musk said that was a tremendous number, but we all know he likes to exaggerate. The most noticeable change was the stage separation, which now happens in a different way. Maybe he just wanted to spice things up a bit. He obviously didn't go into details about the changes, but did note the company was continuing work to upgrade the launch pad to avoid the damage caused by the first Starship launch back on April 20th, such as a steel sandwich water deluge system. We're actually going for overkill on the steel sandwich and the concrete, so that should leave the base of the pad in much better shape than last time. SpaceX also made improvements to the Raptor engines, with Musk describing the vehicle launching in April as using a hodgepodge of engines built over time. The Raptors on the new vehicles include changes to the hot gas manifold in the engine to reduce fuel leakage. So, we have what's called a hot gas manifold. It takes the fuel-rich gas from the fuel site powerhead and transfers it to the main chamber, or transfers it to an area above the main chamber where it then mixes it with oxygen rich gas and goes to the main chamber and combusts. SpaceX has made a number of improvements to that hot gas manifold, which is arguably the riskiest part of the engine. It's also something that is subject to hot gas leakage, which is sort of methane rich hot gas leaking through the bolt holes of the fuel manifold. So that's something that gets very hot, and if it gets very hot, it can gap. So an improved design of the hot gas manifold as well as higher torque up on the bolt of the hot gas manifold to minimize the potential for hot gas fuel leakage at high pressure. That's one of the single biggest improvements. A hot gas manifold is one of the most essential components of a rocket engine. It's responsible for taking the fuel and the oxidizer from the numerous pumps and lines that the pair flows through for pressurization, cooling, and other purposes. These make their way into the manifold and then are sent to the combustion chamber, mixed and ignited, to generate thrust. This requires the component to handle hot and cold gases at different pressures to ensure the combustion chamber can work flawlessly. Combustion chamber problems have surfaced on the Raptor engine as well, with SpaceX's first Starship tests seeing the engine emit green flames, which indicates the chamber melting due to an oxygen-rich environment. That's not good for a rocket engine, but Musk said he fixed the problem and he's feeling optimistic about the next launch. I think the probability of this next flight working, getting to orbit, is much higher than the last one. Maybe it's like 60%. In an online conversation in late April, he estimated a better than 50% chance of success on the next launch. And of course, Musk did not commit to a specific launch date. A lot of variables here that are outside of our control, he said, an apparent reference to the Federal Aviation Administration launch licensing process. We think probably the launch pad upgrades and the booster and ship are ready in about six weeks. Musk, in that April conversation, said he expected to be ready to fly in a couple months. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing progress over at SpaceX. And if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.